A report has come out that reveals a DeJounte Murray trade is incoming. Given the fact the Toronto Raptors have been linked to the Atlanta Hawks and reports and rumors over the past year for a bunch of their players, a lot of people are speculating that the Raptors could be the team that gets involved to acquire the Hawks all-star point guard. So we'll discuss that, including Darko Ryokovic catching some serious fire as of late to the point where some fans are calling for him to get canned just a third way into his first season with the team. So we'll talk about that, including the Raptors being named as a potential suitor for Donovan Mitchell, according to Vegas. So lots of crazy stuff going on. I'm wishing a Merry Christmas to everyone out here watching this vid. I hope everyone's celebrating with their fans, having a good time, eating some good food and all that type of stuff. But the Toronto Raptors news, it keeps rolling even during Christmas, even when we don't have games going on. So let's just jump straight into it. And the first thing we're taking a look at is Darko Ryakovich under some fire as of late. Now, the Toronto Raptors, there's no other other word to put the season than disappointing came into this year all hyped up Darko Ryakovich was brought in to fix the vibes to fix the culture things were getting a little bit toxic with the older players not meshing with the younger players Nick Nurse calling out people in the media all that type of stuff and Darko Ryakovich was supposed to put an end to it. However, the drama regarding Darko just, you know, a couple months into his debut season with the Toronto Raptors has started to heat up. And it starts off sort of with a quote that, or the big reason people have been pointing to Darko now over the past couple days is a quote he gave a couple days ago that really caught the attention of the mainstream media, you know, mainstream NBA media, talking, saying, hey, Darko Ryakovich, when asked about changing the lineup for the Toronto Raptors, he says, It's not like we have Steph Curry sitting on the bench and I'm not putting him out there on the court. And, you know, Darko Ryakovich, his sort of press conferences, his interviews, I personally really like it. He comes off pretty positive, energetic, and, you know, a bit candid. So you'll get quotes like this that could read a certain way. This wasn't him sort of bashing on one of our six men or, you know, any guys on our bench here. It was just kind of pointing to the ludicrousness of some of those questions that have been asked. But I kind of like the tone, but other people are definitely rubbed the wrong way with Darko Ryakovich. is just always kind of jolly attitude, not to, not to make any Christmas puns, but always kind Kind of being candid and making smiles and jokes like that even the raptors have been a bit desperate and those sort of good vibes even from darko rayakovich has been falling off a little bit as of late and given the tone of that question given some of the videos we've made over the past couple weeks there's been a lot of rumors darko's even talked about it himself about potential lineup changes you know changes to the starting lineup grange recently put out an article saying that Pirtle might be moved to the bench we don't know if that's an inside source of him just spouting sort of stuff in his articles but People aren't really happy with specifically the usage rate of Dennis Schroeder. He's a guy that's getting more shots than OG and an OB, who's a player that we might be giving $40 million per year for two next season. And he hasn't been super efficient. His uh, three-point shot started off really hot for this Raptors team, but has cooled off as the season gone along. And down the stretch of games, it's even more weird because he's getting close to the amount of touches as fourth quarter Scotty Barnes, which is kind of a crazy thing. Or sorry, Scotty Barnes leading the way, and then Pascal Siak, who is our top guy, top dog on this team. Not Scotty Barnes. Scotty gets the most touches down the stretch of these games, but I digress. Darko Ryakovic has a tight relationship with Dennis Schroeder. He has his favorites and things like that, and people just are kind of rubbed the wrong way, specifically with these types of rotations, and you know how he kind of responds to things, and I see guys on the Raptor show roast his positivity, roast the you know three wins in a row, he's buying people dinner and those types of stuff. Personally, I don't mind all that. Obviously, if uh, we were winning games and, you know, he was doing these types of things. No one would really care. But Darko Ryakovich was brought in to do as I said at the beginning. Fix the vibes on this team. Fix sort of the negative clouds that were looming over this Raptor squad last year. And frankly, from what the players have been saying, you know, how they've been addressing Darko in the media, the post-game interviews, and even on the court stuff, despite the fact the Raptors have been losing... It seems at least things are more positive. So even though we're losing games, we're losing at a little bit higher rate than we were last season, the players seem to be happy with Darko Ryakovic. He isn't doing anything egregiously bad. You know, some of the rotations can be questioned and things like that. But personally, I don't have a major problem with what Darko's been doing. And if Nick Nurse couldn't get a winning team out of this squad, I don't know how, you know, Nick Nurse, we see what he's doing in Philadelphia right now. He's one of the league's top coaches. I mean... The fact that Darko, he still hasn't been horrible. This team hasn't, you know, been the Detroit Pistons by any means. But the fact that Darko hasn't gotten something new out of this core group that wasn't working for the past two years, I mean, 
we can't just throw him under the bus now two months into his first season. But that's just my take. What do you guys think about Darko Ryakovich? Let me know in the comment section down below. Next thing we're taking a look at is DeJounte Murray. A trade coming. Trade is coming for DeJounte Murray. Not necessarily with this Toronto Raptors, but a lot of people are pointing to the Toronto Raptors after a basically this report that came out from Mark Stein that said the Hawks are expected to explore trading DeJounte Murray. Multiple teams have consulted in Orlando believe that the Hawks will explore their trade options with DeJounte Murray over the next six weeks leading up to the February 8th trade deadline. Now, the Hawks, like the Toronto Raptors, are kind of in a rough spot. I mean, if you look at the, the standings right now in the Eastern Conference, Atlanta is just one seed ahead of us, not even in the play-in tournament. They sacrificed, and the Hawks are a team that sacrificed a bunch of draft picks in order to acquire their top star, at least our guys in Siakam, OG, Scotty. We kind of drafted them, kept them in. We didn't sacrifice too much of our future. I guess we did trade a draft pick to the San Antonio Spurs for Yaka Pirtle, but man, the Spurs are looking good after getting draft picks from us and the Atlanta Hawks and those uh, deals that they made over the past couple years, but I digress. The Hawks are a team that don't want to be bad. They're a squad that wants to win now, and Trey Young has been putting up some pretty solid stats specifically, so getting some guys you know that fit Trey Young better, trading for Jonte Murray, who needs the ball in his hands, you know, is going to be doing similar things that what Trey Young is doing out there on the court. I could see why they're trying to get some value back for DeJounte to build around Trey, you know, build a team that Trey's proven he made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. This is in the bubble year. You might say it's, oh, or fluke, or sorry, a bubble year, the year following the bubble year, but you could say that might have been a fluke. You could say it, whatever it is, but Trey Young is a pretty solid player, even for his shortcomings on the defensive end, and that's where the Raptors come to play because we've all heard the reports, the rumors about Pascal Siakam. They're desperately trying to acquire him, so... Could a deal for DeJounte Murray, for Pascal Siakam, that sort of framework of a package really work? Well, let's look at it from the Raptors' side of things. You know, how would we feel about this deal potentially going down? Because DeJounte Murray's a guy averaging 20 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, 5.4 assists. He's a player that's in the past averaged near a triple-double, so his numbers have definitely digressed a little playing alongside Trey Young. When there's less assists to go around, you're kind of playing the two-guard rather than, you know, the Russell Westbrook-esque guard that immediately pushes the ball up the court. But is a guy that's very solid. He can shoot the basketball pretty well, 38% from behind the three-point line, 83% from the free throw stripe. So it's really a solid player on defensively is strong for a guard, 6'5", still pretty young, 27 years old. So DeJounte Murray would really be an interesting piece for this Toronto Raptors team. And you look at his shooting splits, this uh, season specifically, he's really increased the amount of three-point attempts he's been taking this year. You know, right now in terms of uh, his shot distribution, 36% of his shots are from behind the three-point line. And he's, again, hitting 38% of them. So he's becoming more and more of a shooter with his new role with the uh, the Atlanta Hawks. So, again, a player that's only 27 years old. He's a guy that, you know, facilitates, doesn't get assisted on a lot of his buckets and went down this season as well. So can create his own shot, can, you know, space the floor for this Raptor squad. And given the fact that Schroeder obviously is a guy that has been good, he's been good, more of a six man. More of a guy that you prefer to come off the bench, be a spark plug, be all these types of things. DeJounte Murray has been an all-star. He's been a lead guard and could be a really nice piece to bring into this Raptor squad. Frankly, since we've been uh, looking at players potentially to trade Siakam for and things along those guys, he's a guy that's locked in under contract and you know does it on both ends of the court. Is a tall guard. Could fit Scotty Barnes nicely. Out of the sort of players that have been rumored and named for Pascal Siakam, DeJounte Murray, even though he's a little bit older than some of the players, isn't a guy that I would mind to come back. Again, I still value Pascal more, but Pascal's an unrestricted free agent this summer, and the Raptors have been a bit questionable in whether or not they want to bring him back. So a package involving DeJounte Murray doesn't uh, turn my head too much, but we'll see what Masai Ujiri can potentially do. But the Hawks are seemingly going to shop DeJounte Murray and try to make something happen. They're a team that's pretty well as desperate as the Toronto Raptors right now. So we'll see what ends up happening along those lines, trading one problem for another. Might work out, might not. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And the final thing we're discussing is the Raptors a potential suitor for Donovan Mitchell. And personally, we went through this whole Donovan Mitchell drama a couple summers ago with the KD stuff and all that. All the, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers want a lot of value for him, but I was peeping the sort of, I saw this on Twitter actually, but basically the odds came out in terms of where Donovan Mitchell could land and the Raptors were randomly named as a potential suitor. Obviously the Knicks are the favorites, the Heat, the Nets are there, the Pelicans and Sixers have 
significantly better odds than us, but, you know, the Raptors are there at six. So we're a potential suitor for Donovan Mitchell if, uh, I have no idea how betting odds work, but I think this number ended up coming out to about a 3.45% chance. So, hey, if we get Donovan Mitchell, I'm not sold that he's the perfect piece for this team. I mean, he would help our offense tremendously. He'd be a nice sort of guy that fits around a Scotty Barnes. Isn't really a lead guard. is more of a two. Could shoot the basketball, but again, it's going to be a free agent in a couple years. I'm He wore the Raptors dir- jersey during the dunk contest, but a lot of quotes, a lot of reports that have come out indicate he wants to play in New York, which is his hometown, so it'd be a massive risk to sort of trade for this guy. The Cavs, again, are a squad that haven't been that great, seventh seed in the in the Eastern Conference. Mobley hasn't stepped up. They dealt with some injuries this season, so maybe they trade away Donovan Mitchell. We'll see what happens. I still think, again, the odds still predicted to be very unlikely, but could be a cool fit. I mean, Donovan Mitchell is a ridiculous basketball player, 28 points per game, six rebounds, six assists, you know, pretty efficient as well as three-point numbers is dipped a little bit this season but I wouldn't complain if Donovan Mitchell was on the roster but the amount of pieces we'd have to give up in order to acquire him could get messy but let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news you guys are best to make this far subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already wishing you guys a Merry Christmas anyways I'm signing out cheers